Welcome to Dakota Starry Nights. If you've searched for an easy way to collimate an RC or Ritchie Cretien telescope like I have, you may have come across a lot of confusing information and in some cases required that you purchase specialized and expensive equipment that you're probably only going to use once or twice. After watching a bunch of YouTube videos and reading up on it, I decided there had to be a simpler way. So I spent an afternoon here adjusting and readjusting and trying different approaches and combinations until I finally discovered a simpler way to collimate a Ritchie Chrétien telescope. It's really no more complicated than collimating a Dobb or Newtonian telescope. In fact, it's almost the same except for one additional step that's not required with a Newtonian telescope. So let's get right to it. So what you're gonna need is a Hotec laser collimator, the kind with the 45 degree wedge in it. So the nice thing about the Hotec laser collimator is that it has this expanding ring so that you get dead center in the middle of the optical axis. Whenever you use thumb screws you're going to push it this way or that way and that may knock out your alignment especially if there's just two of them like on the standard focuser. When you have three you can equalize it by going around little by little until you can get it in there. So this will get you dead on you know by using this expanding ring here. The other nice thing about this collimator, you can use this for a Newtonian telescope too. It's not just specialized just for an RC. So down the road almost everybody has a reflector on hand or will get one at some time and having this you'll have the tool you'll need in order to get it collimated. And a Cheshire eyepiece with the 45 degree reflecting wedge in it and a couple of Allen wrenches in order to adjust the primary and secondary mirrors. For the secondary mirror you'll need a four millimeter Allen wrench and for the primary you'll need a three and a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench for the grub screw that locks the mirror in place. This is for a six inch RC scope. So it all breaks down into three steps. One is to collimate the secondary mirror, which is right here, and that's achieved by turning these three Allen head screws a little bit in or out. The second step would be to collimate the primary mirror in the rear, and then come back and recollimate the secondary mirror. So now let's get into the details some of which can be found in the PDF user manual for your RC scope online. So it's best to attach the focuser without any of the spacers that come with the telescope. You want to connect it directly to the visual back so it's a solid connection. And you want to set up the telescope in a well-lit room uh, orientated horizontally and pointed to a light colored wall. In this case, I've got it pointed to a sheet that I'm going to illuminate with a lamp. You insert the Cheshire eyepiece with the 45 degree wedge pointed towards a light or I find it works pretty good if you point it towards a window that has light coming through it. Now you want to look through the Cheshire eyepiece. You'll see a small black dot and a dark ring with a larger bright circle. The dot is the hole of the Cheshire eyepiece. It's that hole right there. So that's the dot you're looking at. The dark ring is the center mark on the secondary mirror and the bright center circle is the reflective 45 degree wedge of the Cheshire eyepiece. The larger black circle outside of that are the secondary mirror and its holder. If the secondary mirror is in good collimation the black dot will be dead center 
in the dark ring or donut, which will in turn be centered in the bright circle. If that's the case, no further adjustment to the secondary mirror will be necessary. If not, then you want to turn the Allen head screw nearest the center dot offset. So if you saw through the chest here that the dot was like over on this side, you want to go to this Allen head screw and adjust that slightly in or out. You want to nurse this in because a small adjustment here reflects to a bigger, no pun intended, reflects to a bigger adjustment inside the Cheshire eyepiece. Now you want to remember whether you went in or out with this screw and what screw it was. And as soon as you make that light turn, go back to the Cheshire eyepiece to see what effect it had. If necessary, continue to turn it in or out using very slight turns. To change the direction of the dot, move to another screw. So if you find that you're turning this in and now it's going way off or it's going way up or it's going way down, then you want to bring it back to where it was if it gave you any kind of correction that was in the general area you're looking for and then move over to one of the other ones and again slightly turn them just a little bit until you get it directly in the center of the donut, the black dot. So that's the process. It's very similar to a Dobsonian or Newtonian telescope. Now the optical axis is denoted by a thin white circle on the outer edge. If this outline is a perfect circle of uniform thickness, no further adjustment to the primary is needed. If not, remove the Cheshire eyepiece and 2 inch adapter and insert the Hotec collimator. Okay, here I have inserted the laser collimator and turned it on and as you can see, it is off. What we're looking for is for that beam of light to drop down that little black hole there and evenly illuminate the outer perimeter. When that's done, you'll know that the focuser and the primary mirror are aligned to each other. Now, it's off in this case because this stock focuser I have replaced with a telescope service rack and pinion focuser that is a substantial upgrade from this focuser. These stock focusers tend to be okay if you're going to just use a DSLR, but they sometimes are out of square and they're difficult to align properly. Uh, so I'm not going to be changing any of these screws to line it up so that you could see it go down in there because that's already been done. But this is good too because it's going to show you that it is not square to the primary. In other words, they're not in line with each other. But right now, we're just trying to get that dot to go down that rabbit hole and line up with the primary mirror. It's really very similar to when you do a Dobsonian telescope. So you'll loosen the grub screws, which are these smaller little screws, and there's three of these and three of the adjusting Allen head screws for the primary. You'll back these out a, between a quarter and one eighth of an inch turn, and you'll turn the laser collimator on and adjust the primary by turning the larger Allen head screws that you see right here in or out by just one eighth of a turn until the laser drops down the hole in the laser collimator wedge as seen. When it's in the hole it's going to illuminate the outer edge evenly. If you look down the scope and off to the side, you should see a ring on the primary mirror evenly illuminated as well, but not a laser dot, much like you would when you use a Barlow on a laser for collimating a Newtonian. Now you're going to see two different views of that laser when you look down the mirror. So one of them will be the reflection of the wedge in the laser collimator that you see there. And the other one is going to be the, the donut that's evenly illuminated on the outer edge.
Now for the third and final step that differs from collimating a Newtonian telescope. You're going to be removing the Hotec collimator and inserting the Cheshire eyepiece with the two inch adapter already attached. Put it back in there and repeat the steps that you had done in the beginning until the black dot is dead center in the donut, which in turn will be centered in the bright circle. If that's the case, no further adjustment to the secondary mirror will be necessary. If it's not, then again, carefully adjust the secondary as before until the dot is centered again. So that does it for the bench collimation procedure. If you want to take it further, you'll need to do a star test, which is pretty much the gold standard for any of these collimation procedures. That evening I did a star test and produced this image. So to sweeten it up, I the secondary and turned it a little bit and then was able to achieve this image. And it didn't take very long at all because again, we were already right there, really close. So you shouldn't need to touch your primary mirror. This is just the secondary mirror adjustment at this stage. And also I'd like to add that be sure to choose a star close to zenith so there's less atmospheric disturbance on the image. Also make sure that your optics are acclimated to the ambient temperature. Try to pick a night that has, you know, at least average seeing. Uh, because all of those things will affect this. This is a very precise procedure. But for most cases, this is going to be really good enough because there are other things that are going to have a negative impact on your image. And if you got this close, you should be okay. Hey, well, that'll do it for this workshop. If you found this information useful, consider becoming a member if you haven't done so already. And to all my subscribers out there, a big thank you. Until next time, clear skies.